Right, look, I think they'll be more on it this weekend. I, I, I have a feeling they probably had used last week almost as a training run for this week. You know, and even I've been watching Chasing the Sun, the documentary that South Africa have put out about their World Cup success, and there's a this week's episode, um, and some of the clips are now up on YouTube, explained how Nina Aber and Razi and Felix Jones used, um. Training ground, sorry, training ground footage that they found on YouTube. Jones went and found stuff on YouTube of France's training ground to find what their calls were, and then used it against them. They had a, a, an Irish analyst that they employed who played, who was based in Montpellier, who went and timed, basically timed the letter and studied Ramos's um, kicking kind of t- technique, so that Colby knew exactly what the triggers were, and they used the games, the rugby championship, basically to lay traps for France, so that France didn't know what their team were team was until the last minute so they played four different out halves across their, their campaign so the France didn't know who was going to be starting out half same with full backs and centres and it got me thinking like Will Connors played in the pool game you you have had four different out halves playing for Leinster in this European campaign so far he's trying to I think he's trying to lay the same kind of traps for La Rousselle so, so that Raj doesn't know what's coming and just I think he's added something different in terms of his ideas his innovations uh, his mindset that, that that was different to what Lancaster who did a great job at Leinster over his time it did and there's a, it's presenting different pictures and there's a mindset piece as well so I think we won't know whether it's effective until mm. 8 o'clock on, on Saturday night but it certainly presents something different this week and we'll have probably planted a few seeds in Roger's head as he tries to consider what Leinster are going to offer this time around <laughs> That's so interesting So do you don't know who's playing 10 really? Like I, I expect Ross Byrne to be because we expect the player who played last week in the win to yeah. back it up. But you then suddenly I watched week. this thing. You said that I thought last Harry week. Was play last you week. said Harry last week. Yeah, yeah. so that, that's the thing. So they've been rotating in positions that you don't expect them to rotate. And everything is with this game in, in mind. I mean, there's big selection calls to be made at Leinster. And I, I have a piece in tomorrow's paper about how I think if they don't nail those, I mean, it's an obvious thing to say, but like they have to get their team right this week. Like Conan's their best player on form, apart from Gibson Park. He's been on the bench to they play him. You know, Connors hasn't played in Europe since the first game, but he was exceptional in that game, and he brings that chop tackle focus that really worked against La Rochelle. The, I think Ross Maloney's light in the second row. If you're going up against the La Rochelle, do you put Jenkins in? What does that do to your lineout? There are really critical decisions they have to make to get the balance of their team right. And I don't think O'Gara has those same issues. I think O'Gara knows his team um, much more cl- with much more clarity. And uh, like Brian O'Driscoll was on your, um, the AM show this morning, and he doesn't know. He was saying he, he doesn't think they know who their best ten is, and he thinks it's a major issue. Stuart Barnes said it last week as well. Like not knowing your best ten or or, or having doubts over your ten in, in this competition of all competitions, going up against who they're going up against, I think is a major factor which would place doubts in my mind about what Leinster can do in this tournament. Mm.